Hi, welcome back to Wise Guys. Um, this video is on exponents, complex questions and answers. And I'm assuming that you've already looked at some of the earlier videos just to get an idea of, of what we're doing when we deal with exponents. Here we have first question, um, 4s, 4rs to the minus 3 raised to the power of 2. There's a couple of ways that we could deal with this question. We could deal with what's inside the bracket first and get that s to the minus 3 into the denominator. Or we could take this 2 and, and apply it to every single piece inside the bracket. If we deal with what's inside the bracket first, we're going to take the s into the denominator so the power will change to a positive s. So then we have 4r over s cubed. This entire thing is squared. So again, that's, that 2 on the outside is applied to every single um, number or variable inside the bracket. So we end up with 4 squared, r squared, and then s cubed, which is also squared, so it's 3 times the 2. So we end up with 4 squared, which is 16, r squared, and in the denominator we have s to the power of 6. <coughs> Another way of doing it is just taking the 2 and applying it to everything and then making the changes after. Um, let's just walk through that. So the first piece would be just 4 squared. So we'd end up with 4 squared. R squared. Then S to the minus 3 multiplied by 2. So this would be 16 r squared and then we'd have s to the minus 6. The minus 6 has to go, we can't have a negative exponent so this entire piece then goes into the denominator. So we end up with 16 r squared divided by s to the 6 which is exactly the same answer we got the other way. This next question, we have 4r squared s to the minus 3, same thing, now raised to the power of 0. Again, if you remember from the first video we did on exponents, anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. Doesn't matter how complicated looking it is, it's 1. So in this case, the answer here is 1. Next question, 7a squared b to the minus 3c, all raised to the power of minus 2. So the truth is with this question there's more than one way that you could handle it. You could deal with the b to the minus 3 first if you wanted. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. And we'll just leave that minus 2 alone for now. So let's deal with this b to the minus 3. So 7 is going to say the way it is. We just have a 7. a squared doesn't change. And our c is not going to change either because its um, exponent is 1, positive 1. Our b to the minus 3 is going to go into the denominator and the exponent will become a positive 3. Now nothing, this minus 2, did not change. All we did was deal with what was inside the bracket. Everything here now is raised to the power of minus 2. So we could say it looks like this. 7a squared c to the minus 2 divided by b cubed to the minus 2. Now, it's important to remember that when we have that negative exponent, everything that's raised to the negative exponent can be put into the denominator. Well, this piece that's in the numerator can go into the denominator and that will change our exponent to a positive 2. So let's just, just focusing on 
the numerator, what we're going to do is put the numerator into the denominator and that will change that exponent to a positive 2. What's in the denominator, if we're just focusing on the denominator, raised to the power of minus 2, we can move this entire piece, b cubed, up into the numerator, and that will change this to a positive 2. Again, remembering from that first video that if you have anything to a negative exponent in the numerator or in the denominator, all you do is move them to the opposite position and the exponent will change to a positive. So now we have b, this is a 3, cubed, squared, so this becomes b to the 6th. In the denominator we have 7 squared, which is 49. a to the power of 2 squared, which is a to the 4th. c squared and that would be our answer. And again, there's more than one way you could work with this question. Uh, this is just one approach. Okay. Here we have virtually the same question, this one right here, except a is to the power of 0. Oh yes, and that's a positive 2. So, dealing with what's inside the bracket, we have 7 a to the power of 0 is what? It is 1, right? Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So we have 7 times 1. Let's just skip this b to the minus 3 first and deal with the c. The c stays in the numerator because it has a positive exponent of 1. The b can be put into the denominator and that exponent changes to a positive 3. This entire thing is raised to the power of 2. So rewriting this, we have 7c over b cubed raised to the power of 2. Now everything is raised to the power of 2, so we have 7 squared, which is 49. We have c raised to the power of 2, so c squared. b cubed raised to the power of 2, so that's b 3 times 2, which is 6. And that would be your answer. Now here we have a whole lot of different... Oh no, we don't actually. I thought we had two negatives here, but we only have one. So, first thing I would deal with is this g to the minus 2. So I deal with what's inside the bracket. So we have minus 4n this g to the minus 2 is going to go into the denominator because of the negative exponent. We have b cubed in the denominator and our g moves down and the exponent becomes a positive 2. And again on the outside that exponent hasn't been changed. All we did was deal with was what was inside the bracket. So we still have this squared. Now minus 4 squared is a positive 16. Because minus 4 times minus 4, negative times negative gives us a positive, so we'd end up with a 16, a positive 16. Minus 4 squared, 16. n squared is n squared. B on the denominator, we have b cubed, and that's 3 times 2 right? 3 times the 2. And then we have the g, it has an exponent of 2, that is also times the 2 which is outside the bracket. So we end up with 16n squared, <coughs> excuse me, over b to the 6th, g to the 4th. Last question. We have things going in, on inside this, um, this um, bracket here, negatives, negatives. We've got negatives all over the place here. And if you remember what we did in this last question when we had negatives, we essentially flipped top and bottom. 
So I think what we'll do, actually, is approach this one a little differently. We'll deal with what's inside the bracket first, and then we will deal with the negative 2 on the outside. So we have n to the minus 1 in the numerator, and that will end up going into the denominator. So our 5, we don't have to worry about. 5 stays the same. m to the 3 stays the same. We have n to the minus 1, so let's move that one down to the denominator. Let's just deal with that first. We have n to the 1. And let's just leave our b to the minus 3 in the denominator for now. And this is a minus 2. Now we can leave 5 alone because it's fine. m to the 3 is fine n to the power of 1 is just n, but let's deal with this b to the minus 3. So because it's in the denominator and it's a negative exponent, we can take it up to the numerator and change it into a positive exponent. So now we have 5m cubed b to the minus 3 over n, and they're all raised to the power of minus 2. <coughs> so again, this is essentially 5m cubed b cubed to the minus 2 divided by n to the minus 2. Now, this entire piece that's in the, de in the numerator can be put into the denominator and this minus 2 will change into a positive 2. Our n to the minus 2 can go up into the numerator and it will change to a positive 2. So I'm going to do this all in one step. I'm going to move this n up to the top and it will have a positive numerator of 2. I'm going to move the entire top piece down into the denominator 5m cubed b cubed and it will now have a exponent of a positive 2. So all I did was take the top piece, put it into the denominator, that changed the minus 2 to a positive 2. I took the bottom, the n to the minus 2, or the n, up into the numerator, and that changed that exponent to a positive 2. So, just multiplying through the, the ex, um, powers in the denominator, the numerator, we still have n squared, 5 squared is 25. m cubed squared is m to the 6. b cubed squared is b to the 6. And that would be our final answer. So, <coughs> excuse me, that is uh, complex questions for exponents. Have a good day, and also if you have any questions or concerns, contact Ron Hammerling at the Learning Assistance Center, 632-2251.